Okay, so we're going to start. What did you just say? A schmuck from the hockey team. <laughs> so, Nick DeLuco. You got it. Is that Italian? It is. It yeah. ends in a vowel. It's what? It ends in a vowel. I don't know that. That's, that's the common. 90% end in a vowel. So all and Italian. Everybody, everybody gets DeLuco to DeLuca. It happens all the time. You run one of the largest, like the newest real estate projects in the city that we've been waiting to see for a long time. It's been up for about a year. Uh, yeah, a year and a half now, September of 2018. Yeah, the Avenir Center. That's the one. So you run the whole place? Run it every day. Really? Well, I don't do as much as the other people do. I mean, I'm the one at the top, but they do all the work. And they have to <laughs> listen to me complain all the time, but they run it. So where are you from? Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, originally. Uh, went to school at Brock University in St. Catharines, took sports management, uh, jumped into the arena business right after that. I was in Mississauga at the Hershey Center for in ticketing. Uh, moved to Kingston to the Leon Center, which just hosted the Briar last year, uh, last week actually. Um, was there for 10 years. Went from ticketing to marketing to events to assistant GM. And then uh, they kicked me out of the nest and said, go run your own building in Moncton. Really? And uh, I've been here for almost three years in June. June so that's July. that's actually something you can go take is like sports. What is sports management? It's like business with a sports focus. Like it's so similar to business when I was there at the time that you can't take a secondary course in business. Like it's just, it just tailored, it's tailored sport related business classes. So, you know, it helps you on the financial side, the marketing side, those kind of things. Yeah. So when you so, grew up, did you think oh, I'm going to run a this no. big arena someday? No, I grew up. Originally wanted to be a sports agent when I went to school. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you know you want to run the Leafs and all that crazy stuff. No, and no, day one, want, oh, day one, oh, they're like, day oh. one, they're like, don't expect to come here and think you're going to run the Toronto Maple Leafs. And who was sitting two rows in front of me was Kyle Dubas, who now is the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who graduated from Brock, same year as I did, and is from Sault Ste. Marie. So, yeah. So you could though. <laughs> the dream could be real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a. I'm not a Leafs fan in in at all. No, I actually I don't mind the Leafs. I hate the Habs, mm. the Montreal Canadiens. I don't like well, the Leafs. That's good. I would think the Leafs are okay if they weren't in the same division as the Bruins. A huge Bruins fan, as you probably know. Yeah, I love the Bruins. Do you? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple of rough years. <laughs> Tell me about the day you got the job. So they just kicked you out? Like, how did you find out? No, no, no. Um, Our regional vice president who oversees our Canadian account said, you know, have you paid attention to Moncton? We're looking for a GM. Are you interested in possibly making the move? So I knew a bit about the building, um, not so much the city at the time, but to me it was a no-brainer. I mean, to be able to come over here, have your own building, and then to come on site and see what the building was. I mean... Truly, London's kind of like that gold standard for junior hockey facilities. I don't know if you've been or not. No, no, I never but been. But it's no. uh, it's beautiful, and I'd say our building is equal to, if not better than. So the opportunity to come around that building is something you wouldn't pass up. And you're with Maritimers, and I'm with Maritimers. Do you are the people different here? On it a, is. Just well, honestly, honestly, the classic answer is everything's more laid back, which it is. But in my world, that doesn't work, anyways, right? I mean, you're dealing with you know, major oh, promoters and you're in New York and LA and people want answers right away. So is a different day to day? Sure. But as far as work goes, no, it's still immediacy. I need this right now. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so. I wouldn't think of that, I guess. So what yeah. you have some concerts coming up, like big stuff coming. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, May's crazy. Uh, James Taylor almost sold out. Michael Buble sold out. ZZ Tops, Bastion Maniscalco, uh, the Black Keys, Hopefully, hockey and basketball playoffs. Um, May could be a very busy month. Could be. I. I, uh, I mean, we don't want to talk about it too much, but we got that bad V word that's going around the big virus thing. That one. So uh, who knows what's going to happen with it? There's no use speculating yep. everything, but you, we could see some events being canceled. I hope those other ones aren't canceled. Yeah, I mean, the best case scenario is they go on and, you know, everyone's safe. I mean, ultimately, all we care about is people being safe. You don't want to put anybody in an environment that could jeopardize That's their health. That's a very health. scripted answer. <laughs> Reading it off my <laughs> existing <laughs> I watch. Um, yeah, I mean, then if cancellations aren't ideal, hopefully they're postponements and we can pick new dates down the road and still have them because they're great artists that people want to see in the city. So. Oh, yeah. No, no they, it, it's great for the economy. I feel bad for everybody that's affected. I guess we're all going to be affected, but... So now, say, who's coming? ZZ Top. All of them again, or you just want that one? No, no, let's just t- take that one. Yeah. Um, 
do you get to meet these people that come? Funny ZZ Top story. We had them in Kingston seven or eight years ago, and there was a meet and greet. We were gonna, doing a photo after, and uh, our GM at the time, you know, they come out and, you know, thank you for the show, blah, blah, blah. He go in for the handshake. Speaking of coronavirus times, you go in for the handshake, and it's the immediate elbow. Really? So he was not. He's kind of like a germaphobe, I guess, the band is. So they don't shake hands. Um, so... ZZ Top story. That I did not know that at start. the time. <laughs> well, I think Howie Mandel's the same way. I don't think he shakes hands either. Yeah. Um, but that one was interesting because he went for the full-on handshake and they went eh, oh. like that. And it was just awkward and interesting based on the times we're at right now. Yeah. So. So you had a house in... Uh, Kingston. In Kingston. Yeah. Was that hard to sell? Uh, it was an emotionally hard sell because it was my first home buy. How long, how long did you own it? Uh, less two years, maybe give or take. Okay. And I bought it and I not flipped it, but I redesigned the whole thing, torn walls down to the studs. Did well, the you, whole fl- nine. you flipped it. Like, that's exactly, really that's what it. I do I know every that's day. what you do, but I didn't really flip it. But yeah, there was a lot of time and effort put into that. It was just a little bungalow, but it worked. I mean, and then, you know, we did everything and then this happened and you sell it. Okay, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, oh. let's, let's go back. You bought the house. I bought the house. You ha- like... I went through hell. It was like contractor <laughs> hell. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to, we can't, we can't pass You're going to make me elaborate yeah, on this, aren't you? We're, uh, yes. Being a newbie that's never done it before, it was a big task to take on at the time. <laughs> no, but so you, you seen this house with your realtor. Why'd you pick that one? Uh, great area in the city. Uh, there was some rental potential in the basement. Um, it's like, oh, like slumlord, slumlord, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can make them nice. It, no, no. They were, it was nice. So it had the basement unit, um, great area of the city, just needed some work and you can make money on it. So, yeah. so you've seen how many houses did you look at with your one. realtor? One house one. with your realtor. Well, I wasn't really interested in buying unless there was something that made a lot of sense. Right. Um, right. so you were looking online, you, you just didn't physically go into it the all houses. started at Super Bowl that year. And he was there. We played hockey together. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, if yeah, there's something that you bum, think. Eh? Just yeah, a, yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, you know, seven or eight beers in. If there's something you think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, those realtors are dirty. They'll hook you so fast. Let me, exactly. <laughs> oh, I got one for you. He's actually a really good friend of mine. So we went and saw it. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was an old 70s house. Like, it was just dated. Like, wallpaper and, I don't know, closed-in rooms and all that stuff, right? The typical stuff you see. Um it had an oil tank in it, so we had to pull that thing out. For, well, we for pull our oil tanks every day. Speaking of that, we switch almost <laughs> every every one of our houses to Liberty Utilities from oil. Thank you. Well, I went to we gas have. in Kingston, so I don't know if Liberty's in Kingston. I don't think no, they I are. don't think so. Well, so who's the, what's your agent's name? What was his? What's Drew Mayhew was my guy. Is he still in the business now? Yes. Well, we'll yes. have to. Is he ever come down and see you? He's a huge golfer, so I'm trying to get him out here to yes, golf. Yes, get him to come down, and we'll do a podcast with him. We will. He's way more fun than I am. Well, no, you're you're fun. No, he's really fun. We don't really you know each other. get along like crazy. We, we, uh, we played hockey in the summer together. Yep. And then... Rob forgot about me. No, I didn't forget about you. I just, I didn't know how, I couldn't remember your I name. I left such a big impression on Rob you, that he, oh, he recognized me, but could not, couldn't remember why. <sighs> we played hockey together in the summer. Mm-hmm. Then I forgot your name because I'm so bad with names. I'm so bad I'm with names. I'm terrible with names too. And I, I hate it. Like I could shake your hand and then 30 seconds later forget your name. Me too. But I feel bad doing it because I, it's just something it, you don't pay attention to until you're like, oh. You know what, it's because your brain is somewhere else. Like, you're obviously busy. You run that whole, everything that has to do with that. And mm-hmm. I'm bit, I forget. I just literally forget. Yeah. So then I seen you walking into the room this year. Yeah. And I couldn't remember your name. So it was just an easy, quick, quick out. Like, hey, uh, you half, look familiar. Half clothed. Hey, you look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you come here often? <laughs> who, who did you know on our team? Jason Cyrus. Was the guy from Summer League Hockey. Oh, so we stayed, yeah, we yeah, stayed in yeah, touch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah, he said, you know, I'm playing DMR. We're looking for guys. And then one Saturday at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., and I'm not a morning guy, he said, do you want to play at 10 back in January? And I said, Saturday. sure. We never play Saturday mornings. It was random Saturday morning back in January or December. December. Okay, I can't stop thinking about think your house. I there. <laughs> so you, you, uh, you went look. He said... Come see it, come see it, come see it. You got to see it. Yeah. You went and seen it. So we went and saw it. Um, put in a low ballish offer. Got to a semi-acceptable price. Uh, it was vacant. So took it over, can't remember, April maybe of that year, give or take. Um, 
then from there it was finding a contractor who I couldn't find. And then I found one that was tough. That was okay. Um, took way longer than I expected. Like we ripped floors out, took walls down, new cupboards, new flooring, new bathroom, all of that. How many square feet was the house? 1400, I want to say. Okay. So you spent what? 80,000 renovating it? No, not even that much. No, 40 to 50 at the high end. Yeah. You're not counting your time though. Yeah, well, I'm useless. I can't do anything. Yeah. Come I am, on. I am utterly useless. <laughs> my, I hire for everything. Yeah. Well, good to <laughs> know. Ask my, <laughs> uh, ask my better half. She <laughs> knows how useless I am around the house. So did you make money on the house when you sold it? Uh, yeah. So the Kingston real estate it. market is insane. Well, Moncton's going up too. I know people don't I want agree. to admit it, but it's going up. It is, but Kingston is banana land. I mean, you, I probably made a lot of money off that. I know I did. I made good money off that house. Well, we're not the CRA. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was, there was, for having it for two years and doing what we did, I mean, it was. Well, you don't have to say. Very profitable. So then you came here. How did you, uh, who did you use as an agent here? Uh, Andrew Libby was my agent. Oh, Andrew, he's at Remax. Yes. Yeah. So there was a house on Centennial. Uh, so, you're, so you're just over here. Yeah, I'm literally. Because we're my literally. Backyard. This is, yeah, I can this throw is something in my house. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So we were, I was new to town and, um. Shane Porter from the city was just kind of taking me around to show us some nice neighborhoods and drove by. And I was like, hey, yeah, look at that house. It's a nice big house. Oh, it's got a pool because for some reason I wanted a pool. Um, you have a pool? I have a pool. I have a pool too. I don't use it often though. Yeah, but you know what we got to do? What I'm doing is I'm getting a natural gas hot, hot water heater. <laughs> I'm getting a natural gas hot water heater from Liberty. Yeah. And you can heat your pool in like five minutes. I hear you. Like I'm exaggerating five minutes, but... Yeah. You can take it from 70 to 90 in two, three so hours. When, how, how long do you use your pool for? Like, what's your pool season? Uh, on, without, without that, I have, uh, I've always had a pool. Yeah. I've put in a bunch of pools, too. Yeah. So if just with an air-to-air heat pump, mm-hmm. do you have a heat pump? I'm forced air electric. You should see my bills. No, no, but for the pool. Oh, do you have a pool, pool heater on your pool? No heater in the pool. Uh, I'm like a two-month pool guy. Like no, you can stretch that to four, four and a oh, half. Oh, I know you can with a heater. Yeah, so you could open it up late May. Yeah. May, well, late May April. Long, May long weekend. It all depends. See, I'm by the hospital, so I get this heat off the brick. Yeah. And it melts my ice like I'm the first guy open. But to swim, you're mid, mid-May, mid mm-hmm. and you can have your water at 70 degrees. Yeah. Then June, July, August, you're swimming in, you know, Low September. 80s. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah can. like July and August for me are okay. My issue is... These, so I back onto the high school and they have that, there's the land in between the trees yeah. and everything. Well, there's just so many leaves. I have a cover for it too, but oh, like there's just so thing. many leaves. Like I have to clean that thing every single day. You, you, you put up a golf net. Yeah. Like a. Oh, over the, yeah. Yeah. Have a hockey they're, party. They're huge. And get the guys. <laughs> have you guys put... climbing trees and putting up <laughs> golf nets? Yeah, that's all you want. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's cancel, all what I want at cancel all. Cancel that. Yeah. No, but a pool that leaves are bad. They're they bad. give you privacy, but then they're. Yeah. They're a pain, yeah. Yeah. So that's my pool issue. I mean, I, I need a heater. I need natural gas. Well, do you have natural gas in that area? I don't. I don't. It's in the area, but like it's weird. It like goes around and then it like stops for like, I don't Is know, it close to your or, house? Yeah. It's literally on my street, but it, I don't think it extends past my house. Yeah. But if it's close, maybe we can make a call. No. Can you? Uh-huh. You know somebody? You know somebody? <laughs> yeah, but somebody? you have electric force there. You'd need electric and natural I just gas. the whole furnace over. Yeah. Yeah. You will, but they have some good deals going on. Do they? Yeah. Tell That's me about a, them. I, tell I, me about I'll them. I'll tell what you later after. <laughs> if you want to know, contact Liberty Utilities. They have incentives that it really costs you nothing to switch. Yeah. Nothing. You yeah, because in Kingston, when I got it, we didn't have it originally. Like I said, they ran the line at no cost, but then you had, I think, six months or something to get gas running into your house or else they charge you for that. Yeah. So here you can get it all run to your house for like maybe a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and they'll give you a furnace, hot water heat, so you have like it uh, right away, like mm-hmm. immediate. Yeah, and your the lease on the furnace and the lease on everything is like seventy bucks, sixty bucks a month, and then they give you like a couple grand. Yeah, for free wow. natural gas. So you're gonna go through two Sounds grand. Sounds like a salesman. No, I, well, I am a salesman, <laughs> but I'm not a natural gas salesman. I spill water all over myself. But uh, so, do you are you gonna do any work on your house now? Uh, it was totally redone on the inside. Like it was kind of updated. Is it a big two story? Yeah. Do you know what house White? it is? It's got the pillars. Yes, I know the house. Yeah. You have a huge master bedroom. That's yes, sadly, that's the I one. know almost 
That's and I one. had no idea, I promise. Rob where is not been in my master bedroom. Like, <laughs> yeah. <me> uh, yes. <laughs> no, but I've been in almost, I've been doing this 30 years. Yes, yeah, so you know all the houses. And I know almost every house. Yeah. It was vacant when you bought it. It was. Yes. Oh, yeah, I know the houses. you got a huge backyard, you too. tell me the bad stories about it? No, I don't know. But yeah. you have a garage door in the back, too, kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know the house. Through the pool, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Your master bedroom's the size of some people's houses. It's a big master okay. bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll change the subject. So now, uh, if how does it start if somebody, like the Avenir Center, you got the job. Yep. Halfway through, every person in Moncton for the years before, needing a center, needing a place, talking about the place, are we going to get a place, where are we going to put it? Mm-hmm. Finally, they do it, yep. and they are building it, building it, building it, and we're all, you know... Talking and talking, talking, and talking, talking. Parking, maybe. Did parking ever come up? Oh, do we want to get into all the politics and all the drama? So this is my second. Everything? This is my second downtown building, and Kingston was the original, and they had the same issue. Build it downtown. Where are you going to park? Where are you going to park? So they had a memorial center that was up in the upper parts of downtown, and there was a massive parking lot attached to it. And you know, how can we move downtown and no dedicated parking lot? Where are we going to park? I have if, a view on this. It works out. It's dispersed parking. I mean, you walk. Fi- we walk five minutes. You go west. You go north. You go east. Everyone's going in different directions. You're home way quicker than you would have been in the Moncton Coliseum parking lot. Um, by the time you walk to your car and then sat in a lineup to get out on the street, twenty minutes, maybe fifteen minutes at least on a busy night. I completely, completely agree. And I had no idea where you were going to go with it. Yeah. And it's also good. For the restaurants, 100%. the bars, the downtown businesses. Yep. Maybe you don't go walk by the place selling the purses mm-hmm. and go in that night. But right. you see something, you come back the next day. It creates a lot of buzz and a lot of business downtown. 100%. And frankly, there's nothing worse than coming out of a any. Everybody runs out of a game early because they don't want to wait in the parking lot for 45 right. minutes. Beep, 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 beep. Right. Exactly. I so, love I mean, it, yeah. But force change is... Never good, right? I mean, they're not good. People don't like it. So I don't if think I they tell bring it up you, now. No, it, it's a non-issue. Once the building opens, I mean, mm-hmm. you might hear it here and there, but generally speaking, people know where they're going to park now. They know when they have to leave. They know how much it's going to cost, if it costs anything at all. And it's just part of your event experience. But when you force people to change something, like parking lot to no parking lot, yeah, no one likes it. Well, but nobody likes any kind of change. No, exactly. Especially if they don't have a choice. They only run into the toilet paper. Like, it's like... <laughs> how's, your, how's your stock at home? <laughs> I don't get it. Did you have to go to one ply? No, I, I'd use a rag and wash it. Like, it's not a big deal. I will say, you know what I stock up on? A sock or a rag? <laughs> yeah. A sock sounds much smarter. Yeah, you, yeah two socks. <laughs> okay. I, I may have gone and bought some wine and beer. That's, that that's to part me of the is, emergency kit. is more important. Mm-hmm. So what were we talking about? We were talking about the parking. parking. I don't think it's an issue anymore. No, in my opinion, not. So then now the whole place gets built. It's a super exciting now that we see it. And then you get hired, you come here and you run it. How does a booking happen? How, the, the concert, do, yep. does Jerry Seinfeld, I'm yep. a huge Seinfeld fan. Are does you? he Were you contact there? Were you Yeah, there? I was there for sure. I okay. was in the front row. Were you? Yeah. No. You know what I like? I'll tell you in a second. Uh, is sweets. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. That's, Everybody likes sweets. And then club seats. Clubs. And then well, stands. I don't even like sitting in, you know what I don't like? Is sharing bathrooms with 400. You don't like being in the general population, eh? You want to be know, up. Yeah, I like watching it from a little higher. Mm-hmm. There's, everybody thinks the best seats for any event are down low. For the for Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Yes, for well, me. he's a comedian, of course. He's a comedian. But hockey games in that, you have a better view if you're 25, 30, 40, 50 rows above. I agree. Yeah. You have and a much better view. Even in the corners, if you want to see the whole ice, yes, it's kind of where you're at. Yes, I right? agree. It's it, different experiences in different spots. So, like, if you want to feel the action, you want to sit really low. If you're, like, if you're with your kids and they want to be close to the guys. Yeah. But if you're coming to genuinely watch a hockey game, yeah, rows, like, 15 and up around the building are your yeah. best bet. So, Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. Except does, during Jerry Seinfeld. Does he contact you guys, or do you guys reach out? And try to bring Ven, like these um, big names here. So I would say ninety percent of the time it comes through promoters. So a, a promoter will buy a tour from an agent. So whoa, whoa, whoa! A promoter? Who's a promoter? Like Live, what? Na- Live Nation would be like the biggest promoter in Canada or in the world. So actually. they're a company. Correct. And AEG, which is part owner of the company I work for, is also, I believe, the second largest promoter in the world. So they reach out to Jerry Seinfeld and say, "Hey, we put together all these well, events Seinfeld's for you." Well, Seinfeld's agent we- will come out and say, "Hey, I want he wants to do a twenty date tour." 
here's what we're looking for financially, what it's going to cost for you to buy that whole tour. You know, they put their offers in if it makes sense for them. And then they wrote okay. those 20 dates based on essentially the cost you paid for the show. You kind of amortize that over your 20 markets and the markets that it fits best in. Um, and that's how they wrote a show typically. So you think we want him here. Let's put in a bid and try to get him here. No, other way around. Promoters know all the markets in the country, right? So, I mean, if they, they'll start, if they're starting a tour in the West, you know, it's, we want to go, if it's a mid market tour, we want to go like Victoria and we want to play Saskatchewan we want to play Kingston, St. Catharines, Moncton. Like they know markets as well as anybody, right? And what fits and is the money there to get what we need in order to make the show profitable for everybody. So... We're more of a venue. We send availability based on the time frame they're looking for, and then they route their tours that way. Yeah, and they would know certain areas draw more crowds for this or that or that or this. Well, exactly, and then they lean on us too. I mean, we're a rock and country market as much as people, classic rock and country, as much as people hate to say that. Yeah, I hate um, country. Everybody wants but everything that's it. not country. <laughs> well, here's one for you. If you, don't want, if you want a specific genre, i.e. modern rock, Black Keys would be one. Jack White would be another one. Even if that's not who you want to see, buy tickets. Because then I have the ability to go to a promoter and say, look, we do like modern rock and it sells well. Here's the two shows. Yeah, but how do I buy really tickets well. if there's not here? Well, pick even if it's not the show you want. If you're a country fan and you want Alan Jackson but Old Dominion's here, go watch Old Dominion. Just buy a ticket oh, to the okay, show. Okay, okay, okay. So we have, so I have the ammunition to go back and say, look what we sell for country shows. Yeah. Bring this person the next time they're. Yeah. Out. So you're supporting more of that kind of genre. Right. So you, I mean, ultimately, what matters is ticket sales, right? I mean, yeah. I can say, yeah, we'll do it, but then if we don't, nobody looks good. So yeah. we have to. If you want to see a certain artist or a certain genre, buy tickets. Buy tickets, even if it's not the artist you necessarily want to see at that point in time. Did you meet Jerry Seinfeld? Hmm. I met him in Kingston. Um, did I meet him in Moncton? No, I don't think I met him in Moncton. Did you watch his show? On and off. I wasn't a huge Seinfeld oh, guy. Oh, come on. I love the guy. So good story. Um, the guy, Ken Craig, is the guy who does all the Canadian dates in with Seinfeld in Canada, and I believe it's actually going to be larger now. But I just had lunch with him last week in Ottawa because I was going to the Briar in Kingston. Um, so he's a good friend of mine. Known him for 10, 10 years. Uh, he tours with Jerry, so they... You know, fly around to shows together, and he's really good friends with Jerry. So, how do I Jerry's get him on guy. a podcast? Like, would he? Ah, uh, if he's in Moncton next time, I can ask him. <laughs> really? I will. Oh, Jerry, he's... Jerry, or Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry might be a tougher one. <laughs> Ken, I might be able to do. Oh yeah, it'd be, it'd be fine. Yeah, because Ken's the stepping stone to Jerry. Mm. I'm not going to say that out loud, but. Mm -hmm. So now that we got the booking, everything's there. They're coming. Yeah. What's your daily? What's your daily job now every day? Every day you're going in there. I would say 50 to 60% of my day is booking, you know, reaching out to promoters and agents and either telling about the building, telling about the market, seeing what's out there. Um, and then it's just operational stuff. It's working with the team on, you know, the building as a whole, any marketing stuff we're doing, ticketing stuff, events that we're looking at locally, all that stuff. I mean, I have a great team. Um, makes my job easier, truthfully. Yeah. So, How far in advance do you look at booking stuff? Uh, some stuff can be over a year, like Cirque and stuff. When you're routing major shows that are week long oh. events, can be over a year. Um, some major events can be a year, typically three to five months for so most. So if you guys sign all your contracts, boom, Cirque du Soleil is what you're talking about. Yep, is coming July 2021. Yep, from the seventh to the fourteenth. Yep. When do you tell us the general? Hockey uh, schmuck people of the world. Well, you guys get to know last. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all want free tickets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's not up to us. It's up to when the show wants to make it public, right? So they generally oh, have a, okay, yeah. a release that goes out to say, here's when all markets, here's where we're touring to. Um, tickets go on sale next Friday. Would that Friday. slip through the grapevine, though? A few people start to find out? Um, they're always, people find out because, you know, you have to book marketing before you put it on sale on. So you're technically talking to radio and TV oh, and all those yeah, guys. Yeah. Posters. Um, and... But generally as a whole, I mean, it's sometimes you hear it, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Then yeah. the big official announcement. That's right. So sweets. Yeah. Is there going to be any sweets next year available? Yeah. Uh, there's always sweets available. If you want to go to a group suite for a hockey game, you can rent one for those. Okay. So uh, I could... Get how many friends? How many can I fit in there? I don't want hockey. I want to say there's a 25 and a 30 person suite. 
Yeah, but I thought they were all booked by companies. I thought they were all booked. We have 16 total suites. 14 are all leased. So everything that we have to lease has been leased. But we have two group suites that can be rented as one-offs for hockey or concerts if they're in view. So you can bring a 25 or 30 person party with you to watch a hockey game or a concert if it's okay. So if I want to bring the whole crew, you can bring some friends or families, everything. How much is it going to cost for a hockey game? I'll let you know. <laughs> well, no, but in a, in let me grab my phone. I can tell you. Um, <laughs> Just I want to say it's around two thousand bucks total. So if we all chip in like sixty, seventy, eighty bucks, I've only 50. looked at this number like literally seven hundred times over the last and year and a half, and I can't remember what the number no, is. No, but <laughs> I, I guess I'm just trying. To, I'm not going to hold you to it, but no, no, I know, but I should know. You could, you can all chip in. Hundred percent. Do that too. if you want to. Yeah, a lot of companies just do it as you should do it for all your staff. Yeah, corporate next, expense. Next year. Corporate next expense. Year. Drink lots it's of the Moosehead beer and, and Pepsi and, and, the, and yeah. yeah. Would you say Pepsi? I don't. I don't. Do you drink pop? No. No, I don't. Okay. A lot of people <laughs> drink, drink a pop. lot of water, not pop. Yeah. Do you drink club soda? No. I love club club soda. Do you? Yeah. So Are you a yeah. Buble guy. Uh, I do like Buble. <laughs> Is he sponsoring? Are you a bubbly a guy? A bubbly. It's bubbly. But it's bubbly. Buble. But Buble. So when's he coming? May twenty third. We should get him on a podcast. You dude. should. I'll throw it out to him. <laughs> I'll <laughs> send him this link. He'll, <laughs> <laughs> he'll want to come for sure. Oh, I, it'll be tough for him to go back to the show if he's coming for this. Yeah, yeah, it'd be hard. That's to the be. big concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might not leave. Mm-hmm. So has it been a uh, good change in your life coming here, running this? It has been. I mean, it's it's cool. You're exploring a new city. You get the challenge of running a new building. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been great. It's the building's successful. The team's been good. The city's been fantastic to deal with. Um, yeah. And like how's I said, your, the building's world class. Like it truly is. I don't think people understand how nice of a venue we have here. Um, why? Why is it so great? Just the look, the size. Like it's got, the press level is enough to host an international event of any size. Um, the way we have the seating, I don't know if you noticed, but in the ends at the top five or six rows in the back, they're all black seats, which probably doesn't mean much unless you know the fact that it helps lower your capacity. So if you ever don't sell those seats or you want to make it look really good, rather than curtaining or blocking off those seats with tarps oh. or stuff, it mesh, it blends in really well. I yeah. mean, that's something that typically you don't see um, in other venues. It's actually really smart. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, those are venue things that I notice. But well, you know what? I think I noticed that because I've been watching a little bit of the XFL. Mm-hmm. Big fan, aren't you? No, not really. Who's it for your player? On the XFL, it's brand new. <laughs> it's like that football league that they're trying to start. Like up. number eight. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said something else. Um, and uh, the camera angle, yeah. they never show the second Do you want to section. Know Do you want to know because why? Because there's nobody sitting there. There you go. And it looks packed. Where's that, where's that gavel that? Yeah, I but it looks have like before. it's packed. And yeah. I was looking at that thinking they couldn't have sold out the whole arena, the whole stadium. No. But it looks like it because the first forty rows are full. And they're probably free. Typically on the camera side. So it's typically if the camera's over here, you're going to fill these middle sections with people. So they do that. That's all strategized. Very strategic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what well, happens I re- when I you rem- have to think strategy. <laughs> I remember a little bit of that. We filmed uh, that Canada Russia movie. Yeah. I was one of the players in the movie. And they had these 14, 16 fans. Yeah. And they would move them. How many Every- movies have you been in? Oh, uh, just a couple. A couple. Mm, I'm not a good, good actor. Give me the list. No, no, I saw no, you on TV. Me. I saw you on TV and yeah, for Liberty. Liberty Utilities. And I was like, hey, I play hockey with him. I forget his name, but I play hockey <laughs> Come with him. Come on. <laughs> so they would move these fans, like, you know, all over the place. Mm-hmm. So it looked like all these, you know, people wouldn't recognize that it's the same people. Yeah. They bought seats everywhere. Yeah. No, That's they're right. pretty good. When uh, when a city builds, the, uh, like, a, uh, an event center like we just did here, yep. does it help the economy? Does it help the downtown? Yeah, big time. I mean... I keep going back to Kingston before we built downtown and bars, restaurants, hotels, shops. I mean, those are the things that benefit the most from it. Um, like we talked about earlier, people coming for events, they either come down early and they go and have dinner or they come back later and they have dinner and drinks. Or if it's a weekend event, they're in town shopping all the time. Um, it also, when people move to Moncton, I mean, it gives them another entertainment option to look at, right? I mean, all the shows and things that we have are... We got some good shows. We do. And those are some of the things that you would typically see in major markets that you now get when you come to a secondary 
like Moncton. Um, so giving that opportunity and those experiences to people is a better quality of life all around. And how many hotels, like I've seen a lot of land being sold. Yep. How many hotels do we got now being there's built? There's two in construction right now. There's right a Hyatt across the street and there's the Hilton Garden Inn, uh, Kitty Corner, right across from the Crown Plaza behind the government building. So, yeah. I mean, those are being built around the building because the building and what it brings, right? And there's going to be a new bar restaurant, I think, Camisos, does that make sense? Nah, it's a, I think it's an Italian spot. Don't quote me on that. Italian. Just take, just take <laughs> does that it out. end I don't with an want to go there because I don't <laughs> want them calling me and saying, why didn't you know this? Canuso. Yeah, it ends with a vowel. It does. It's definitely an Italian restaurant. Oh, okay. It's Camisos. It's got to be. Um, it's going in the Hyatt. So that'll be great to have a nice little bar right across the street. If people are interested in drinking. Yeah. Yeah. So it is or good. It's good general real anything. estate. It is. It's, uh, it. Well, and what's the city of Moncton development permits? I think we're in the two hundred plus million dollars in the last. Ugh, you know why? Because they harass me every yeah. day. You for permits, <laughs> permits, permits, <laughs> permits. No. Got to raise the numbers up. <laughs> I know Call every Rob. little bit helps. <laughs> Call true. Rob. Get Call a Rob. permit, Rob. Force them. No, yeah. no, they're great. Yeah, they are. They're I mean. they're actually really good. Uh, maybe ten years ago, maybe it was me too. Mm-hmm. But uh, I find the city's really good to deal with lately. Like city, really like good. Like I said earlier, I mean the city to me has been fantastic. I mean, anything I need, they're there to help out as yeah. well. Um, they're a client, but as a whole, they're, they've they been great to deal with. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming, Nick. Thanks for having me. Nick Rob. DeLuco. <laughs> from Nick. the... From where? From the arena. The, the arena. Avenir Center. That's the one. I, do, I don't want to bring up hockey. I'm, I will pass you the puck. I well, will. we're not going to play the rest of the year, so it oh, doesn't they just, matter anymore. We just, we just found out they canceled, uh, canceled all the hockey. COVID-19. Ah, oh, let the party continue. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Rob. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>